Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can write a C++ program to display the first n number of terms of the Fibonacci series, where the user is going to enter how many numbers that we have to display in the Fibonacci series. And we will display that many numbers or that many terms of the Fibonacci series. In mathematics, the Fibonacci numbers commonly denoted like this form a sequence called as the Fibonacci sequence where the first two numbers are 0 and 1 and after that the number is the sum of previous two numbers. Here we can say that the first two numbers that is f0 is equal to 0 and f1 is equal to 1 and after that a number is equal to the sum of previous two numbers. So we can say fn equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So f0 is 0, f1 is 1 and when this n value becomes greater than uh, 1, we have this formula to calculate the Fibonacci term. So now let's see how we can write the C++ program to display this to the screen. So here I have written some code. I have included the iostream header file and then we have this main function which is the entry point of our program. So here in this video what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the user to enter how many terms of the Fibonacci series he wants to display. And after that we will take the input and we will display that many terms or that many numbers of the Fibonacci series. So let us declare the variables that we are going to use in this program. I'm going to take integer type variables and the first variable that we need is for storing the number entered by the user which will contain the number of terms to display. And after that we know that a number in the Fibonacci series is the sum of previous two numbers. So to store them we need variables. So to store the previous two uh, terms or previous two numbers we need a couple of variables. I'm going to call them as t1 and t2 in short for term1, term2 and after that we need another variable and we call it as next term and here we know that the first term is 0 or the first number of the Fibonacci series is 0 and the second number is or the second term is 1 and uh, after that we will ask the user to enter the number so I'm going to use the cout and I'm going to say enter the number of terms and we will insert this n9 in here and here we need to mention using namespace std because this cout is defined inside the namespace std otherwise we have to use std with the cout here every time so I'm gonna include this statement in here and after that we will take the input from the user c in and we will store that in our number variable okay now we know how many terms we have to display of the Fibonacci series. So we will use a for loop and we will loop through that many times. So I'm going to initialize a loop counter variable. I'm going to call it as counter with a value of 1. And the condition here will be counter variable containing value less than or equal to number. And after that we will increment the value of the counter variable. So if the user is going to enter, let's say I want to display five terms, then this for loop will run from one to five. It will run five times and inside this we will display the Fibonacci series. Now here the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to display the first term which is present in this uh, T1 variable. So I'm going to use C out in here and we will display T1 and after that I'm going to insert a space in here. And here we will write it in such a way that every time we are going to display the value present in this t1 variable. And what we do is after displaying the value present in the t1 variable, we will uh, uh, store the next term in this t1 variable. And before that, uh, we have to calculate the next term. And we know that the next term is the sum of previous two terms. So we will write next term is equal to t1 plus t2 and after that here in our program we are always displaying the value present in the t1 variable and uh, we know that uh, the next thing that we have to print is present in this t2 variable so what we do is we will store the value present in the t2 variable in t1 variable so after displaying the value present in the t1 variable that is not needed 
So our job is to print that to the screen and we have already done that. And after this, what we're going to do is we're going to store the value of the next term in T2 variable. Now, if it is confusing, don't worry. After running this program, I'm going to explain how this program will work. So now this is it. You know, we have uh, written the program. Let's run this. Enter the number of terms. And if I enter five, it will display zero, one, one, two and three. Now here, let us see how this program will work. Now, let's say the user is going to enter the number five. And that means he wants to display five terms of the Fibonacci series. So we have this for loop here and uh, this counter variable. It is the loop counter variable for this for loop will start from one and it will run up to five. We are initializing this with a value of one. And then we have the variables T1, T2, and then we have next term. We have initialized T1 with a value of zero, T2 with a value of one. So first the counter variable will be initialized to a value of one. And then this condition will be checked whether one is less than or equal to uh, five, which is the value of the number variable. Then the condition is true. So we will display the T1 variables value here using the C out. So it will display zero because T1 is containing zero in the beginning. And after that, we are performing T1 plus T2 and we are storing that value in the next term. So the next term will get one, zero plus one. And after that, T1 is getting T2 variables value, which is one and T2 will get the next terms value, which is one. And after that, the counter variables value will be incremented by one. So it will become two. And again, this condition will satisfy two is less than or equal to five. And then we come inside this for loop and we will display the T1 variables value, which is one at the moment. And after that, we are performing T1 plus T2 and we are storing that in the next term. So T1 and T2 both are containing one. So one plus one is two and the next term will get two. And after that, T1 will get T2 variables value, which is one and T2 will get next terms value, which is equal to two. And after that, we are incrementing the value of the counter variable. So counter variable will get three. This condition will satisfy. And again, we will display the T1 variables value, which is one. And after that, we are performing T1 plus T2, which is one plus two is equal to three. And that will be stored in the next term variable. And after that, the T1 variable will get T2 variables value and the T2 variable will get next terms value, which is three. And again, the counter variables value will be incremented by one. So it will become four and uh, the condition will satisfy four is less than or equal to five. And we will display T1 variables value, which is two. And uh, again, uh, next term will get T1 plus T2, which is equal to five. And after that, T1 variable will get T2 variables value, which is three and T2 will get next term variables value, which is equal to five. So after that, um, the counter variables value will be incremented by one and it will become five. And again, the condition will satisfy five is less than or equal to five, which is true. So we will display the value of the T1 variables value, T1 variable, and that is three. And uh, next term will get T1 plus T2, which is equal to eight and t1 will get t2 variables value which is equal to five and t2 will get next terms value which is equal to eight and again the counter variables value will be incremented by one so this time it will become six and now this condition here will fail six is less than or equal to five which is false so the for loop will stop and we have the output which is printed in the screen. So this is how the program will work. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. If you want to say something, then write that in the comment box. For more tutorials like this, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later in the next video.